Hello everybody, this is a brief introduction on how to make a lit sprite material with NextGen sprites. For this we will make use of all NextGen sprites base features. Curvature, reflection, emission, transmission and dissolve. So without further ado, let's get started. For this example I will use the very popular Kenny Alien sprite. So let's move it into our scene. And we need a material that has the next gen sprite shader assigned. And thankfully next gen sprites comes with a widget that does all the heavy lifting for us. So if you look here into window, next gen sprites widget, here we get it. And we have three buttons that give us the option to add either an unlit material, a single lit material, and a multi-lit material. Basically unlit material doesn't need any lights in the scene but doesn't have many features. And then we have, have single lit material, which looks for all um, directional lights. And multi-lit basically looks for all directional lights uh, with additionally all point lights. For this example, I will use um, a multi-lit material. So let's add it. And now as you can notice, we have now a material in our project folder and also it has been automatically assigned to our sprite. And by that, by being a multi-lit material, um, our sprite turned now dark. So let's fix this by adding a directional light. Great. So now let's move on here step by step with our material. Let's open here the material inspector. And we have several panels here. And we move step by step. So first one um, is the sprite panel, which is the default panel, which gives you the basic stuff, uh, which you already know from Unity's, Unity's own sprite shader. We have tinting, and we can enable pixel snapping. And additionally, we have um, double-sided, but this will be explained in another video. Now let's move on to curvature. Uh, curvature is basically normal mapping. Um, so let me attach a normal map. And now we can see uh, it got some curvature. And if I rotate the directional light, you can see the curvature in action. And we can also add an additional point light that will also affect the curvature. Um, best case scenario is always to have the point lights in front of the sprite. In this case, it must be on the minus a minus value value on the C axis. Now you can see the curvature highlights along the sprite. And we can also give the highlights some tinting. So we can make it, for example, yellow or blue. We can also ramp up the depth or move onto the opposite direction and inverse it, basically. We can also ramp up the glossiness. And again, can be tinted in any way we like. And that's for curvature. Now let's move to reflection. Reflection basically shows a sprite that we assign. And let's see what we have here. Let's take the galaxy from the demo and move strength to one. And this looks kind of um, very sharp. And if I go to curvature and disable it, then um, it looks proper again. What happens here is that um, basically curvature disturbs the surface and then the reflection um, basically goes in all different directions. And we can also use this to make some interesting metallic effects. And if I ramp up blue, then it looks like some kind of alloy or something. And we can also um, let the reflection scroll by the world position of the sprite. So if I ramp up the speed on the x-axis, you can see that it scrolls faster. But also looks kind of chaotic. But yeah, you have to decide for yourself what values you like to use. And we can also mask it. Let's say um, you only like the helmet to show the reflection. 
So for this I have here um, a reflection mask uh, prepared, which looks like this. Basically it's a grayscale image. Everything that is dark is occluded and everything that is bright will show the reflection. So let's assign it to our sprite. And here you have it. Now you see that the reflection only happens here around the helmet. Great. Now let's move on to emission. Emission is basically self-illumination. So if I turn off both lights and now ramp up emission, you see that our sprites our sprite is visible again and also this one can be masked so let's say we only like to have the eyes the mouth and the three spots here illuminated again for this I have also a mask which works exactly the same like for reflection so let me drop it here into our slot and here we have it and again can be also tinted I could for example make it yellowish or bluish or red and furthermore we can go beyond one and basically this is very useful if you like to make it glow if you have on your camera HDR activated together with Unity's um, Bloom post-processing effect turned on. Uh, let me turn on back again our lights. Great. So, next step, transmission. And transmission basically gives the illusion that our sprite has an inner life. So let me enable it and let me drop this skeleton here. And if I now move the light um, behind our sprite, you will see that now we get this interesting skeleton. And uh, you can use this effect for many interesting things. You could, for example, hide some secret and then if the player lights with a, with a torch against it, then it could reveal some secret or, you know, can do many things with this. And in this case, um, we just show Kenny's uh, inner life in this example. Let me move back my light to the front, minus 1.5, great. Uh, oops. This also, by, um, just to mention, this only works with um, point lights and spotlights, but not with directional lights. Now let's go to the last step, which is dissolve. And with dissolve, we can let this sprite disappear accordingly to a pattern which we can assign. And let's see, I think in the demo I have already this um, dissolve map here. And if I ramp up the blending, then you can see how our sprite disappears. And we can give the borders more width or make it very, very thin. And the border glow, which we call glow, uh, border glow, can be also tinted, can make it, for example, blue or yellow. And the glow can be also ramped up beyond one. So again, if you have HDR and bloom on your camera, then it could begin to glow. And yeah, that's basically it. And NextGen Sprites also comes with some extra bootstrap assets, which has more dissolve maps and also have, uh, for example, flow maps for the um, FX shaders and many more stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. That's how the um, basic standard next-gen sprites um, sprite shader works. And thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye. Hey there, wait a second. Let me actually show you what the double-sided feature does. Let's say you like to flip your sprite. In this case, Unity recommends to f um, uh, scale the x-axis negative. So in this case, it would be minus one. And now, as you can see, it's flipped. But let's say you like to actually flip your sprite by rotating it. And as you can see, your sprite is now dark. And this is where the double-sided feature comes in place. If I enabled it, then the lightning works um, properly again.
And yeah, that's the double-sided feature. And thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.